Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekah HaKadash. Double honor to the true leaders of the nation of Israel in these last days, the other apostles of Great Millstone, also known as GMS. And salutation to the most highest men in the four corners of the earth, pushing his word of sincerity and truth. And Shalom to the sisters that support and subscribe wholeheartedly to the message of deliverance and salvation of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. This is your brother, with Yum Yum, the GMS Mississippi. What an interesting topic. Going into the distresses of this world, you know. So when I talk about the distresses of this world, I'm not specifically talking about the harsh times, the hard moments, or leading up to the time of Jacob's trouble. I'm talking about the the stresses that occur in this walk of yours, you know, the anxiety, the depression, the sadness, the loneliness. The anger, the rage, the disappointment, you know, because this walk of ours is custom made and custom built in order to enhance you as a spiritual son and a spiritual daughter unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Because the Most High is not asking us to make, a, make our calling and election sure. He's telling us to make our calling and election sure. And that's why as it is written, those that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You know, the Most High is, 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 is not one that he should lie. So therefore, as his only begotten son told us that we were going to be recipients of those things that he received, we were going to have to drink of the, the cup that he drank from. You know, all of those statements are true. And that's why the scriptures also states to think it not strange the fiery trial which is to try you you know because it's not as though some strange thing is going to to occur out of nowhere or some strange thing is going to happen unto us you know these particular events and different levels of emotions they're definitely going to come but the key point of it all is how you pivot when they come unto you how do you react when you're faced with it Know, what is your particular point that you go to in your thought process on how to be able to mentally, physically, psychologically, and spiritually handle these different levels of attacks? You know, because that's all it is. When you read in the book of Job, you know, when Job was summoned, you know, with the angels to be presenting himself as well before the Lord, the Heavenly Father, you know, he was questioned on. You know, what has he been doing? What has he been up to? Uh, you know, just roaming up and down in the earth to and fro. Doing what? Doing what Satan does. Because the Most High has all things two and two, double. As he has righteousness, he has wickedness. As he has positivity, there's negativity. As he has happiness, there's sadness. There's no new thing under the sun, and we're not the first peoples, the first people here on planet Earth roaming around and living. You know, there are generations upon generations upon generations of men and women before us who have encountered the same life events that we face. And the great majority of that comes from Satan himself throwing particular stumbling blocks and roadblocks in your path or plaguing you psychologically or spiritually to where you either are becoming doubtful or you become more so an unbeliever in the fashion of believing on the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. You know, you've ever had people that, 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 that have had something so traumatic happen in their life to where they don't even believe there's a God anymore? You know, those particular plagues of the mind and plagues of the heart are real when it comes to Satan doing what Satan does, planning and instilling different levels of, of, of doubt in your mind j just to have you conquered. And then once he's taken complete hold of you, if he doesn't stay in you, stay in you for the rest of your life, then, you know, he'll abandon you incomplete and no longer whole and damaged wounded and go on in, into another house which is another another individual it would 
take root and leach onto another vessel and work to attempt to destroy that individual. But you have to fight against those particular temptations. You have to fight against those thoughts. You have to fight against those negative actions that, 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 that Satan really tried to force you to make. You know, because he tempted our Lord, our Lord and Savior. You know, tempted him one way by telling him to, to, to cast himself from the top of the mountain. There with a, a band of angels would, you know, come to his aid. He also tempted him with giving him the kingdoms of the earth. Popularity, notoriety, abundance. But all he had to do was just bow down and worship him. So if these things were written as particular acts committed against our Lord himself by Satan, you know, how much the more or the lesser of us, those that are followers, followers after this same, the same individual, the same man that Satan was attempting to break, was attempting to conquer. This same Satan, it's the same one that the Lord allowed to put hell upon our forefather Job, but yet just save his life. You know, he was commanded to, to, to spare Job's life, but anything else he was allowed to do unto him. <laughs> so so say was like okay all right job i can't touch you but i'm gonna take your family job i can't kill you but but, but i'm gonna kill your sons and your daughters job i can't take your life but i'm gonna put boils all over your body wish so, so you wish you were dead satan will take you to the brinks the brinks of breaking but it's all about not breaking not folding Everything under the sun is easier said than done, but at least you are hearing it be said. If you're able to hear something be said, you're able to, to, to conjure up enough strength and enough spiritual fortitude to possibly believe it. Then once you believe it, then you're able to conjure up enough strength to execute upon it. Meaning what? That you're going to try to attempt. You're going to try to make an attempt. You know, I really hate using the word try and I hate using the term. You're going to put forth the best effort possible in order to execute upon it as a preventive measure. Uh, measure. You know, and that's what it's all about. The preventive measures of Yahweh Shimmy Shai bring forth a sense of, of relief when it comes to the temptations that Satan uh, pre uh, uh, presents unto you. you no, know, because we're not those particular individuals that that, that allow the woes of this world and the, the, the life events to actually affect us to the point to where we're no longer men and women and sons and daughters of the Heavenly Father. No, we understand, okay, this particular chastening of the Lord, you know, is my turn. But you know you're going to, 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 to constantly endure it. You know you're going to do to the best of your ability everything in your power and your strength to get over it. To get past it. Because everything is temporal. You know, a road, a, a, a speed bump is not an 18-foot wall. You know, it, it's, it's something that you're able to get over. You may just need a little more momentum. Do you know that it's, e it's, it's, it's easier to get over a speed bump while your vehicle is at a higher velocity versus having zero velocity but having uh, placing it in neutral and having to get behind it and push it. You will have a more difficult chance getting over a speed bump with less velocity and or no momentum at all. So that means what? As long as you're steadily moving in the spirit 
then you'll be able to break through all these particular stumbling blocks, roadblocks, and speed bumps that are placed in your path. Until next time, I say Shalom.